for me, you know, studying storytelling for as long as I have, you know, sometimes I know what's going to happen in the movie before it happens. We were watching this. Oh, man, I do that all the time with my, my wife, though. It's it's terrible. She was just like, how do you know that? I'm like, they set it up. Like, obviously, like, what's you, you probably like that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there was this scene, opening scene, it's this guy and this girl, and they're just not getting along, they're fighting, they're arguing, and I was like, I get it, they're going to hate each other, and then something in the middle of the story is going to happen, and they're going to realize that they're meant for each other, then they're going to fall in love and get married, and yeah, so my wife hits me, I'm not watching movies with you anymore. (laughs) <laughs> well, that's what it is. Is it? It's called a linear plot uh, plot structure, and actually, Shakespeare created it. And it's true for everything. Like even the yeah. commercial, I'm tell, I'd say, what's your intrinsic interest? What's your your act one, two? And it, it applies in a short form, either, even a 15 second commercial or a full narrative. It, it's the same structure, <clears throat> unless you're dealing with bilinear plot structure, like a memento or something. But those are so hard to do well because you you're job is to confuse the audience and then make them understand afterwards which is the hardest type of structure but are you is is that like the sixth sense kind of like something like that or no that's actually pretty linear even flashbacks can be considered linear it's more like memento where you're literally taking blocks of time and shifting them around I don't oh, know okay. Yeah, I see, I see what you're saying. But you're go, you're jumping literally forward to the timeline as it exists and backward to the timeline as it exists, and and trying to that's where you you literally have to confuse the audience. Yeah. And then set it back up. It's the hardest type of. Uh, yeah. Script I, gosh, ever. Gosh, what movie did I watch that was like that? Anyways, um, that they say I don't know if you've heard of this or seen this, but they're saying one thing that makes Pixar so different and unique is they kind of break the status quo of what a story is all about like yeah like, like up. cars like have you seen the movie cars i have i mean i got a little two-year-old i've seen them all <laughs> five times right and yeah. in cars mcqueen at the end he stops right he doesn't win the race yeah and it's just like every every pixar it kind of breaks the status quo a little bit of that hero's journey in a way well, it does it, but it makes it more realistic at the same time that not everybody wins all the time. So that that's where where the type of media I like is that not everybody wins the race. Sometimes the uh, one of the best I don't know sure if you've seen the superhero movies that I've ever seen is Brightburn, and it, it has a very dark ending, and it's about this kid who's becomes it's basically a villain, a super villain, and it's about him and how he becomes that super villain. And it's a wonderful movie. It, has, it makes you think afterwards. And the, they, they don't, the, basically, nobody wins. He lives to, and he starts terrorizing even more. So it's just, just flipping that script on people. Uh, and that can go one of two ways. It can go terrible or it can, people can love it. And usually people love it because it's different. It breaks yeah. the mold. Yeah. It's a different type of psychology. So Yeah. So it makes sense. Steve Jobs is the one that created Pixar. And he was all about challenging the status quo, which yep. makes sense. Um, anyways, uh, Avengers infinity war, that movie is what brought me into the Marvel universe. I was never that interested into the Marvel universe. The best and, the, and the reason why it got me so intrigued is because they ended the movie with Thanos winning. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah. wow, I can't believe they were so bold to end the movie, but react like reality. That was merely just the middle part of the story. Right. right. I thought it was part. really genius how they did that. It was. And then you also had, uh, you know, Iron Man dying too as well. So it showed the, re- and what, why those things are resonating with you is because it's not like, oh, the hero always wins. It's showing that this is, it's real. It's more, it makes it more real. It makes it more like, like who can take out this Thanos guy who's a god, right? It's not really probable, even if they are a, like he's um, the god of gods, like the universe god. So it's like, how can these tiny superheroes take him on? It's not realistic. So I like how they play, like you said, played upon the defeat in that. And yeah. that, that's where I think it's the most part of it. You get that fall. Uh, in the long term format, that was actually just the fall of action of like act three that we didn't know about because there's another movie for, for the closure, what we call the denouement in the industry, which is um, the fall of action. It's the French term, mise en scene is everything in the frame, things like that. So um, it's pretty cool once you start diving deep of the subconscious stuff on the stories. So because mm-hmm. uh, the, the one that really resonated to me the most that kind of revived my faith in it, because I was like, oh, there's so much garbage out there is Midnight Mass. I don't know if you've ever seen that. 
um, it's a great it's a great um, uh, couples like show uh, show, but it's uh, two Stephen King books combined. But the acting, the the sub depth, the theology behind it is so amazing. Uh, it's I don't want to spoil it, but it's about vampire uh, vampire the Strogi, and it's it's absolutely wonderful. And I never thought I would like it that much, but it just captivates you. It's slow for the first two episodes, but it draws you in. So. Mm -hmm. Cool, dude. I'm excited to get to your story as well. Have you thought about what story you want to share with your um, highlighting your brand and your 4W? Oh, I, I'm still like, that's why I'm doing this. It was at the right time where I'm always led to right time, right situation. Uh, I'm trying to craft, I really want to do like the media broker thing as me, my brand and I, mm -hmm. uh, because obviously my client is on studios. I want to still keep that client. And I want to expand on that. Um, the story, I don't, the story that I want to tell, I mean, I have had, I had an awesome life. It's so hard for me to like, cause I didn't get, you know, didn't see anybody get murdered. I still have both my parents. Like I, I had a good upbringing. So it's hard for me to have that. Like uh, I, we weren't poor growing up, but that's kind of all I had. Uh, I had to make my own way, still have student loans, that type of thing. But as far as the story, I really have to think about like what I want to showcase um the main thing is uh, being awakened is that was most important to me is just kind of being triggered to uh a purpose and what i call the source or a haya and uh that was really my awakening right there uh so i want to more let people know that the like like what you're saying when what really resonated like i think the thing things that are holding you back are more internal i don't think it's your intelligence or your expertise i think it's an internal block so when i started thinking about that i'm like wow he's exactly right that I'm not confident enough that, and I have the, the, the resume for sure, you know, so that that's kind of where it is, is embracing that not fearing success. And I've been, I've been really pushing hard on that. Cause I know I have the, the mind for it. It's just uh, actually doing the work and doing the steps and the sequencing and the process and not skipping steps. Like I always do. And I'm good at it. I'm good at skipping steps. I'm probably one of the best people to <laughs> go from A to B in like two seconds. Like, Oh, I do a lead, do that. No, no. I just made the sale like that. So, um, but uh, that's, that's where I, I'm trying to force myself to do the hard work. So then I know what I'm doing. The problem is, is I, I'm not understanding how I'm selling things. So I'm not evolving. That's why I'm trying to internalize that. So, yeah, um, you know, based upon everything that, you know, we've talked about and in your sessions, I think you need to share your, your like your origin part of your story is you need to talk about like why you went into film, uh, yeah. why you went into film. I think you need to share maybe your earliest memory of, you know, one of your favorite movies and, uh, what it, how it impacted you. Right. Yeah. You know, I think anytime we could see the origin of what inspired someone, it gives us more confidence in people. So I could show you talking about just you as a kid, like what was your favorite movie when you were younger? Um, what was the movie that had the biggest impact in your life when you was younger that inspired you? There's two blade and fight club. I love fight club. That was one of my favorites. Uh, I would go more on Fight Club because Blade's just like, I was like young and got to see my first rated R movie, which was awesome. But, <laughs> and I just was on TV and no one was up and I just stayed up for it. Yeah, um, I think Fight Club's very metaphorical too. Like is. we all have different versions of ourselves. Yes, right. It, and it is. It's, uh, so I've been playing around with, because uh, uh, I know you do with shadows, but just your own shadow as your your ego and how to basically challenge your own ego and face your shadow. Cause it's behind us all the time, but to pull it away, to literally face your own shadow and your own ego, that is kind of the breaking point for a lot of people. I think is to face that. Um, yeah. and humble so, yourself. so I'd say earlier in the, your story, talk about, um, you know, how you love watching movies. One of your earliest movies that you love was fight club. Right. Then we could do B-roll of a kid watching a movie when he was younger, like just sitting on the ground, right, to kind of show that story. And then um, then talk about, you know, when was that moment you decided to go into film school? What was, and, and you put it so poetically, right, of like stories challenge the status quo. Stories make us, uh, put us in this new world of reality. They make life worth living. And so now as you go into that, now you come to that epiphany, that slogan, 
where it, and, and I think for you, that's your why I want to help people create new route realities for their clients through their story and film right there. Yeah. I want to help clients create a new reality for their clients through their story, through the power of film. And then that's where you go deeper into your why. And the way we do this is the five P's and here's the results, right? And then we get into that last inspirational message. Yeah. No, I like Shakespeare that. Shakespeare been- once said like a Shakespeare quote or a Shakespeare line, maybe to pull it in a famous movie line. So what's that last inspirational message? Message. Like almost like a philosophical um, story, a historical story. Well, I've always liked, um, I I don't know if it's Plato or Socrates, but I, um, I must, I am the wisest man for I know I know nothing. So that's one of my favorite quotes from Shakespeare. Uh, not Shakespeare, uh, I think it's, it's, I think it's Plato. But. Why? So how could we take that quote and that message and turn it to an inspirational message for your client? Um, that everybody has their own experiences to share to the world to benefit. So it, it, like your experience is different than mine, then your experience is different than your wife's, than, than my kid. We all have that different experience and nobody's is the same. It's, it's completely unique. So, you know, based off your experiences, knowledge that I don't know, and it's communicating that experience, uh, you know, in the corporate setting, it's that community, that company experience uh, out to the person. So, yeah. So anyways, be thinking about the story. That's where, that's what I feel. Okay. Uh, So we need to get your four W's wrapped up. Okay, once we get your four W's wrapped up on page 90, now we're talking about the limiting perceptions and beliefs of your ideal client. Okay, what's the common beliefs that hold them back from working with you? Um, You know, uh, one could be, you know, I don't have the money. That's always one, right? I don't have the time. Um, I know nothing about storytelling. Storytelling in film isn't going to work, right? This doesn't make sense. So you're just listing those limiting beliefs out and then I'll help you categorize these next time. And then um, page 93 is generating our intro and outro statement. So your intro statement is basically a sentence where we're combining all your four W's into one, into one statement. Oh, okay, cool. All right, same thing with your outro message. And then 94 is essentially the structure right? The hook, how am I grabbing their attention? Okay. Um, what's that two sent two sentence story. That's both motivating, inspiring intro statement. Okay. We talked a little bit about the backstory, um, the trials, the epiphany, the changing the, the moment we briefly talked about that. What was the transformation? So everyone's format is a little bit different, but that's kind of a basic format that we use um, with this demo video structure. Cool. Uh, it's, it's weird being in the other side. I didn't know that. that can't. Wait, when you just kept throwing it, I'm like, I just know I need to do this. So, cause that's what my source told me. So I was like, I'm here for a reason. Like I was about to leave when you, it was like, so whatever it is, cool. Save me three grand, great. <laughs> Oh. Um, yeah, dude, this is exciting. I'm, this is this is a fun part. So I'm excited to, to go this through you and see what we can come up with. And so yeah. uh, I know with both our um, expertise in this area, we'll generate something really cool. Yeah. And then, then after we do the story, then it's just practicing it, getting it down, and then scheduling it. And then we'll schedule the B-roll. And then, um, yeah, and then I'm sure you'll have some insight on what you want it to look like. And I'll share, you know, what's worked with us and other clients that's been through this process. Yeah, so yeah. you think you could have the four W's done in a week? Oh, I'm going to complete the rest of it probably by 